a few years back, I discovered this little magic trick. What you're about to learn is how to become a time multi-millionaire. But first, I have a really, really important question for you. Are you ready for it? Hey, it's Marie Forleo, and welcome to another episode of the Marie Forleo Podcast on Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. Now, if you're new, I am so happy that you joined us today because this is going to be a fast and powerful episode that, no kidding, will change your life. You know, one of the things that can hold so many of us back from reaching our biggest goals and dreams is that we tell ourselves this pervasive and destructive story that we just don't have the time. I mean, you might say something like this. You might say, oh, you know what? I would love to write that book, Marie, but I don't have the time right now. Between my job and my family, I just can't. There is no way I can't fit it in. Or maybe you're thinking, you know what? I would love to take better care of my body. My dream is to get into the strongest, best shape of my life. But work is like bonker pants right now. I've got seven different projects. They're all overdue. There is no extra time or bandwidth to make that dream happen. Or maybe you're like, you know what? My gosh, what I would really love I finally want to launch that business or that nonprofit or my course or even do that event or take that beautiful trip, but I'm just so damn busy. I don't have the time. Now, if any of that sounds familiar, raise your hand. My hand is raised. You are definitely not alone. I've said those kind of things to myself so many times too. And there's no shame in that. There's no judgment. We all do this. But here is what's so super cool. A few years back, I discovered this little magic trick, if you will. So it's a mindset shift that can turn you into a time multi-millionaire. I'm not kidding. And I'm going to explain exactly what that means in a minute. But first, I have a really, really important question for you. Are you ready for it? And I need you to really pause and think and feel what's true in your heart before you answer it. If you could wave a magic wand and make any important change in your life happen over the next 12 months, what would that change be? In other words, what's the specific project or goal that you would love to reach? And even if you didn't get 100% complete on that, you just saw major progress on it, what would that be? I want you to say your answer out loud right now. I want you to write it in the comments below. I want you to write it down in your journal, whether it's finish my book, launch that course, get into the best shape of my life, live debt-free. I don't care what it is. I don't care what topic, big or small, write it down. Did you do it? If not, pause this, go back and do it. Now, I want you to write this sentence underneath it. I already have the time to make this happen. Now, I know you might not believe that in this moment, but I'm about to show you exactly how you do. In fact, I'm going to help you become a time multimillionaire right now. So here's the deal. In this framework, being a time millionaire means that you can magically create an extra 1 million seconds to spend on any dream or goal you like over the next year. So I know that 1 million seconds, it's kind of hard for our brains to comprehend, right? But what that actually equals is 11 days, 13 hours, 46 minutes, and 40 seconds. Way easier to grasp. So for simplicity's sake, let's just say you get an extra 11 days over the next year to totally devote to your dream. Now, don't you think, and be honest about this, don't you think that if you spent 11 days giving your time and your energy and your focus to the most important project in your heart that you would see some progress? Of course you would. But let's not stop there, right? Because I promised you that I would help you become a time multi-millionaire. So let's get you 2 million more seconds to devote to your biggest goal or your biggest dream this year, which when you do the math, 2 million seconds equals 23 days, 3 hours, 33 minutes, and 20 seconds to be exact. So again, just to simplify, let's call it over 23 days, right? That's more than three weeks devoted to your biggest dream. I mean, come on now. You and I both know that if you spent anywhere near three weeks on your most important goal or project, you would see major friggin' progress. So right now you might be wondering, all right, Marie, this is all well and good. We can all do math, but how am I supposed to find three free weeks a year? That's impossible. And that, my friend, is where I say, no, it's not. In fact, 
I am 100% certain right now that you can start carving out this kind of dedicated time for your dream. I want you to check this out. If you spend 30 minutes a day on doing random shit on your phone, looking at social media, getting caught up with the news or watching TV, guess what? You are wasting the equivalent of 22 days a year on crap that does not ultimately matter to you. Don't believe me? Let's do the breakdown. Here's the math. 30 minutes a day times 365 equals 182.5 hours a year or wait for it, 22 full eight-hour work days. Boom. Now look, I do not care who you are, what you do. I know in my bones that you can find an extra 30 minutes a day. For example, you could wake up 30 minutes earlier. You could go to bed 30 minutes later. You could take any number of apps off your phone. And if you're someone who likes to watch a lot of TV, pull the damn TV off the wall for a few months. All of us, myself included, we all waste at least 30 minutes a day on something that just doesn't create lasting change in our lives or that we don't really value. For all of us, there is something we could easily swap out, right? And create the equivalent of 22 free days a year to devote to our biggest dreams. So my challenge to you today is actually a three-parter. So number one, First, I need you to answer that question I asked above. If you could wave a magic wand and make any important change in your life happen over the next 12 months, what would that change be? What's the specific project or goal that you would love to make progress on, right? Remember to write it down and also write down that sentence, I already have the time to make this happen because that is true. Then step number two, you need to make yourself a time multimillionaire by finding just 30 minutes a day to devote to that dream. And finally, if you want me to help you get more done in less time with less stress, with all this kind of stuff and so much more, please go to join Time Genius right now. I've got some amazing free training coming up that I think you'll really get a lot out of. Make no mistake, your time on this earth is the most precious non-renewable resource you have and you deserve to use it wisely. Until next time, stay on your game and keep going for your big dreams because the world really does need that very, very special gift that only you have. Hey, did you enjoy that episode? If so, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button right now. It'll make sure that you never miss an episode coming up. And more importantly, it helps us reach more incredible people just like you. So subscribe now and thank you so much. Don't click away because I've got even more productivity tips coming to you right now. Hey, it's Marie Forleo. So a lot of people ask me, Marie, what does a day in your life look like? And the truth is none of them look the same. It always is depending on what season it is and what my primary project is at the time. But what I can tell you is three things that I never do every single day. And those three things make me weirdly productive, passionate, and happy. Yes, even after 20 years in business. Let's go. Number one, I never start my day without a success plan. You might be saying, Marie, what is a success plan? Let me tell you. It is a way better version than a to-do list. So I'm gonna show you mine right now. It's on a simple little notebook. This is like a $2 notebook. You don't need anything fancy or expensive. And I write down the most important things that I will get done the next day. So today's success plan. I write down the meetings that I have. Like here, I know I had a little meeting with my friend Regina to help her out with her pricing. There were things I needed to do to prepare. Um, I'm giving a couple of big talks coming up soon. So I have all of my notes to rehearse. I have my meetings in here. And then there's a little section at the end for like personal stuff, like return my rent the runway. And then I need to leave at 6.30 to get to a friend's place for dinner. So I never walk into my day without my success plan. As someone who has ADHD, it's not a wise thing to walk into an open day and go, well, what do I feel like doing? Or what might be the most important? Uh-uh, I'm the queen of reverse engineering and setting myself up to give myself the greatest chance possible for feeling successful every damn day. Number two is I never or rarely sit still. So this is kind of interesting. I hope I'm not giving you motion sickness, but this is just the truth. You wanna know the thing that I say the most often to my team? It's this. It's a, uh, hey guys, I'm pacing. Can you take notes? And here's what I do. I talk to my team. I have my computer like this and I'm literally holding it 
like it's a friggin' pizza and we're having meetings and I can look at stuff. And the reason I do this is because energy gets stagnant when you sit around all day, at least my energy does. And some of my best ideas, some of the best copy that I've ever written, the best headlines, the best you name it, literally come to me while I am pacing around. So this is what I do. I remember one time I was talking to my friend, Chris, and she's like, can you please sit down? You're giving me motion sickness. So I'm sorry if that's happening for you right now, but look, if you're someone who has a lot of energy like me, and if you ever feel yourself just getting like tired or stagnant, get up and walk yourself around. Pace, use your computer like it's a pizza and have your meetings on the go. Try it out. Number three is I do not force myself to sit down and focus straight for eight hours a day. Why? Because A, I don't think our brains are built to do that. In fact, science shows that after about four hours of intense focus, most of us are pretty toast. So I like to take breaks during the day. It gets me and keeps me fresh. I'm gonna go interrupt my man. I wanna see if he's in here. Oh, what you doing? I'm talking about the fact that I don't work for straight eight hours a day that I take little breaks and do things like interrupt you. So if you wanna be weird like me, give these three things I never do a go. And if you love stuff like this, then you gotta join us for Time Genius. Give me five days and I will absolutely transform your life, guaranteed. I'm gonna show you my exact morning routine, how I change it. I'm gonna teach you a little tiny language trick that'll make it eight times more effective for you to drop any bad habit. We've had thousands of people come through and they get results so fast. So you need to go to jointimegenius.com. I promise you it will change your life forever. And now I would love to hear from you. So do you have any weird things that you never do that help you stay happy and productive and stress-free? I wanna know about it in the comments below. And if you aren't already an MF Insider, you need to get your butt on that email list. It's amazing. I send out great emails every Tuesday. They will keep you motivated, inspired, and on track. Until next time, stay on your game and keep going for your big dreams because the world really does need that very special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you next time. We're not stopping there. I've got a lot more tips to change your life coming up right now. So um, I recently realized that I don't feel or think that I've been setting myself realistic goals in trying to build my business, my online business. And um, I'm really stuck. I feel very stuck about this because I have this big vision. I have so many things that I want to do and I know that I have to start step by step and I'm trying to just focus on one thing. But I, I start to get into it and then something happens and I fall back and I, I have a really busy offline business. So I'm a holistic therapist and I have a really busy offline business. So I don't have much time daily to spend on the online business and building it. And I'm just, I feel just very stuck on how to set realistic goals. I want to have my website up in about two and a half months time. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's very realistic. But then when I get into the daily life of it, it, it doesn't work out. So first of all, what you're describing is really common. So thank you so much for sharing. So honestly, I'm curious, you said it twice. You said, I, you know, I get into something and then something happens. Can you be more specific with us about what the something happens actually is? Either I get really much more busy in my online, offline practice. I have a class that I'm teaching that I have to prepare for. I have a visitor coming in from out of town. I, I'm also in the midst of training to develop my skills. So I'll have to sidetrack for a training. Um, then I get tired. There's, a, there's that aspect. I feel very, very tired all the time. I'm, I'm kind of edging towards burnout and I'm really trying to be mindful of that. Yeah. And sometimes I just want to sleep because I'm just really tired and I have to be available for those sessions that I do offline. Like my, my clients are number one right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you're so, describing a situation that many of us have found ourselves in and that many of us can relate to. So I'm going to ask a few more questions because that's how I can get a really accurate picture of the best way to support you into having a different experience so you can achieve more and feel good while you do it. So curious as to uh, what time you're getting up in the morning and how often you are exercising or working out per week. And this is not a question designed to create um, negativity or judgment. It's just think about this like just we want a, yeah. a little snapshot and an assessment. Yeah. So I have zero, zero okay. exercise. Thank I you have for a, being I have a gym so in my building. 
Yeah. Zero. Okay. Um, I wake up, I start at one and I usually tend to finish at 10 30 PM. Okay. And I go nonstop. Yes. Um, sometimes I start at 10 and then I go till 10 PM, 10 30 PM nonstop. And I usually get up two hours before I have to go. So I usually get up at 11 a.m. if I'm working at 1. And if I'm working at 10 a.m., then I'm getting up at like 8.30 a.m. Okay. okay. And I'm working nonstop till evening time. Okay, great. So this is the place that we need to look because it's not necessarily about being able to set realistic goals, but I think it's actually taking a further step back and setting yourself up for success, starting with how you're designing your day, what time you're getting up, some of the first things that you're doing during the day and making sure that you're scheduling yourself so you're not jam-packed. Because I know for any of us humans, right, we're not built like computers. You can't see this, but I'm holding up my laptop right now. You know, computers are made to run nonstop, right? We can turn them on, mm -hmm. we can hammer away all day with not taking a break, and pretty much they're gonna keep running day after day because they're a machine. But we humans are built differently. And if we don't architect our day, in the right way, if we don't build in rest, exercise, hydration, give ourselves free open space, white space, just to dream or to think or to play, mm -hmm. we are going to put ourselves in that position where burnout is a real thing. And then it's going to put us so far back that it's going to take 10 mm -hmm. times more to even just get back to base zero, nevertheless reaching our biggest dreams. So I know this may not be the answer that you are thinking of, but I want to encourage you to take a look at rather than designing realistic goals is how can you design the most inspiring schedule for your day and your week so that you're optimizing who you are and what you can contribute to this world. And I'll tell you something, Bianca. I am someone who believes in a philosophy called simplify to amplify, that less is more. It's been one of the secrets that's allowed me over the last two decades to continue to not only achieve things that are really important to me in my business, but to expand and grow in what I'm capable of taking on and to do so in a way where I'm not burnt out, where I'm not getting sick. I'm going to knock on wood right now just because I'm a little superstitious and that's what I like to do. But it's actually been several years since I've been sick. And I've done more in these years than I've ever done possible. I'm probably in one of the best shapes of my life. I feel really good. Now, by the way, I'm not saying all this to say, hey, look how great I am, because I've mm -hmm. also put myself into places where there's burnout, where I've gotten sick, where I felt like crap, where my relationships were on the line. So I've been on both sides of this mm -hmm. equation. And I can tell you that one of the biggest differences that I made that allowed me to create the results that I'm really proud of is designing my day with intention and being really, really clear about when I'm going to bed and when I'm waking up. I'll give you an example. Just last night, my stepson came over. We were ha all having dinner. It was a really beautiful time. And uh, somebody said, hey, why don't we have some wine? And I knew that today was a day for filming to me. I knew that I wanted to wake up at about five o'clock in the morning and start writing and doing other things that I had to do. Other folks had wine. I did not. I made sure I got to bed by 10 p.m. so that when I woke up this morning, right, I was a little tired, but I actually felt great. And I was able to do everything I wanted to do. So my recommendation for you is to take a step back, to look at your calendar, and to start designing an ideal day, week, and month, and scale back. We want you to do less so you can accomplish more. And I guarantee most of us have little pockets of places. I certainly always look for them. They're almost like weeds that grow up in our calendar, mm -hmm. like whether it's looking at technology or there's just certain habits that we have. I can say that one for you right now is just not moving your body. And I know I'm just reminding mm -hmm. you of something that you already know, but I think all of us need reminders from time to time to get back into the practice of what we know is going to be best for us that when you move your body, you don't even have to work out for a full hour. It could be 20 minutes every day. It can be some yoga. It can be some things that you're doing on an app from your phone. It could be walking around the block and getting fresh air. But that movement energizes you. It helps your mind be able to focus more clearly and more succinctly on whatever you're doing so you actually accomplish more in less time. I've seen this happen in my own career time and time again. I'm going to pause right now and I want to see if Gregory wants to add anything because he, he's not an up and down. Well, yeah, because I'm in the same spot. You know what I mean? And I feel like one thing that you said, architect our day. Yes. Like I think that's personally going to help me as well because it'll keep me on track and those little other nuances that pop up. 
I can almost sort them into my next day or the following day if I stay focused. And then I'm also thinking like, just Bianca personally too, asking for help is such a huge um, thing that I don't do. And I'm like, well, it's my dream, it's my business, it's my goals, it's my day. But other people can help us achieve those as well. Yeah. And one of the greatest lessons I've learned recently, even here on Marie TV, I've you know personally gone through some things that I needed to ask for help in delegating some tasks so that the job got done. Yeah. You know, that that might be something to look at as well. It's just saying, I might need a little help. It's think about it like if you were building your dream house, right? And you had this beautiful piece of property and you had the ability to build whatever was gonna be the home of your dreams. Mm. You wouldn't do it haphazardly. You wouldn't just go in and start slapping some wood around. First, you would architect it. You would design mm -hmm. it on paper. And once you designed it on paper, you would have much more likely of a chance to have that dream house built than if you didn't. Mm -hmm. And we could do the same things with our days, with our weeks, with our months. And cumulatively, that adds up to our lives. So I don't know if any of this is resonating for you. Let me know. But I know it's completely possible for you, Bianca, to turn this ship around. Yes, it's resonating with me for sure. I just still feel overwhelmed by it. But um, yeah, looking at it from the, the point of view of how inspiring schedule for the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just know that you're your most important asset in your life, meaning you're the most important asset that you're bringing to your therapy sessions and to your clients. You're the most important asset that you're bringing to your mm -hmm. mission in this world, which is to help people heal. So to take that first part of the day and devote it to taking care of you, again, through movement and exercise. If meditation is something that you're into, or maybe you're into prayer or journaling, I know that um, for me, meditation has been incredible because my brain is very, very active and it helps me clear the slate for the day and stay really, really focused. And then also reviewing what I actually have to get done. So looking at my journal, looking at exactly what needs to happen today so that I don't get taken off track by the things that can pop in my inbox or you know, if someone texts or there's a fire that has to go out, I know precisely what I need to get done in order to feel successful for the day. And by the way, that's not 25 mm -hmm. things. That's usually like two or three. And I know anything beyond that is a bonus. Mm. Yeah. So one last thing that I'll share with you, um, you need to stop being so hard on yourself. You're such a beautiful human being. You're working so very hard. And I can tell you this, that the path to not only getting more done, but to enjoying this beautiful adventure we have called life mm -hmm. is to be kind to you. That really is the secret that allows everything else to unfold. It's going to permeate your relationship with your clients. It's going to inspire you to do higher level, higher level work. And you're going to have this feeling of being burnt out and constantly chasing your dreams. That's just going to start to melt away. There's no race, mm -hmm. my love. I know we live in a culture that kind of pushes mm -hmm. us to hustle 24-7 and to never take a break. But you know mm -hmm. this in your heart. It's not mm -hmm. a sustainable model. And the only one that can make the changes that are necessary to have you have this experience of life is you. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank You're you so, so welcome. much. I'm very honored to be on the Colin show. Oh. So honored to speak to you. Well, please do us a favor. Will you keep us posted? I'd love you to take some time today and just start to map out what would it look like for you to have a day where you feel energized, where you took care of you first. What time would you wake up in the morning? What time would you go to sleep? What are the kind of activities that you would put into that day? And where can you start to scale back? Where can you find those pockets of time to leave some open space? Where can you say no to something that you might be cramming in because you know what? Having a full night's rest or taking 20 minutes to meditate is actually gonna help you achieve more with less stress. Mm -hmm. So take some time to, today to do that. And then most importantly, you're gonna have to implement, but I'd love you to keep us posted and let us know how it goes. I can promise you just a week's worth of working out in the morning, even for 20 minutes can change your whole mindset, your whole energy level and how you approach each and every day. Thank you so much. I will definitely keep you posted. Yay. And I Th look forward to keeping you posted. So, Yay. Yeah. Thanks, Bianca. Thank we believe in you. Thank Got you so this. much. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. You want to keep this productivity train going? Keep watching.
Today's question comes from Kat, and Kat writes, I love Marie TV. Keep it up, girl. But my question is, how do you stay consistent? I always try to set some time aside for actions that'll help me get further in my career. I'll be doing great for two weeks, and by the third, I fall off the wagon, go on a hiatus, and have to start all over again, which is much harder to do each time. What can you suggest for staying on task without getting burned out and quitting? Lots of loves and laughs your way, Cat. Kat, this is such an important question. Most of us struggle with being more consistent in some part of our lives, and it's really worth working on because the rewards of being consistent are huge. So that being said, here are five secrets to help you be more consistently consistent. Number one is keep your eye on your why. In order to really stay connected to what you're doing over the long haul, you have to have a clear, compelling vision for what you're trying to achieve and know why you wanna do it. So for example, it's a lot easier to keep saving consistently if you're saving for something important to you, like your first house or a once in a lifetime trip. You know, when I think about Marie TV, this is a big commitment and we're in our fifth season and it's not easy to keep doing this week after week, but I am committed because I'm clear on my why. This show is really the soul of my brand, and it's the primary way that I get to make a difference to as many people as possible around the world, and that's really important to me. So that's my why, and it is always in my eye. Number two is pick your battle. Now notice, I didn't say battles, I said battle. So I want you to pick one thing and just stick with that. The reason why is that we human beings have limited capacity when it comes to willpower and discipline. In fact, studies show that doctors recommend you do not try to do something like quit smoking and quit sugar at the same time, or you're gonna fail at both. And I tend to agree. So pick one thing, and once you really make that a habit, habit and you win that battle, then you can add on something else. Number three is schedule it. The late Stephen Covey said this, and it is a major, major secret to consistency. Don't prioritize your schedule, schedule your priorities. So this subtle distinction is so important. When you're trying to make something consistent in your life, you want to really build your whole life around it rather than trying to fit it in. You know, when it comes to Marine TV, the reason that this gets done so consistently is that we schedule it and we build our entire year around it. So everybody who works on Marine TV, we have these dates for the year. They are sacred. They're non-negotiable. And this is going to happen come hell or high water. Hey, it's Marie Forleo. You're watching Marie TV. The place to be to create a business and life you love. Today is Q&A Tuesday. Keep rolling. Number four is ignore your feelings. Now, this is probably the only time you're going to ever hear me say this, but when it comes to developing consistency, it's pretty darn important to ignore the voice in your head that says, "Wah, I don't feel like it. I mean, anytime you're trying to be consistent at something worthwhile, like working out or meditating or painting or whatever, it's guaranteed you're going to hear that voice. Well, I don't feel like it. I mean, I hear that voice all the time. There are some days, as much as I love what I do, I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like doing much of anything. But I've trained myself to override that whole voice in my head because I know the power of consistency. Now, if you've been consistent with something for a long time, or you're just clear that whatever you're up to, you're just done with it, that is fine. You can totally pay attention to your feelings, close that chapter, and move on. However, if you're still trying to develop consistency and the deeper part of you knows you really do want to keep going, please, for the love of all things holy, ignore your feelings. You can tell them, bye, Felicia. Number five is catch that wagon. So don't have an all or nothing mindset. Don't think that if you miss one day meditating or you miss one workout that you're a total failure. When it comes to falling off the wagon, that's fine and you probably will. We all do. This is where I think you're getting tripped up though. I think you're spending so much time beating up on yourself that you fell off the wagon that the wagon is just leaving into the distance and you're not getting back on it. So make sure you run and catch that wagon. And if you need a little extra inspiration, remember this tweet. Success doesn't come from what you do occasionally, it comes from what you do consistently. 
So there you have it, Kat, five secrets to be more consistently consistent. And now I would love to hear from you. What's been one idea or strategy that's helped you become more consistent? I wanna hear about what's worked and what hasn't. Leave a comment below and let me know. Did you enjoy that one? Well, don't stop watching because I got even more coming up right now. This is not Q&A Tuesday, people. You know what it is? It's... It's time for Q&A Tuesday. It's Q&A Tuesday, where the answer comes from you. Now, the question I want you to answer today, and I'm going to get to that in just a few minutes, is inspired by a quote by Ms. Karen Lamb. A year from now, you'll wish you had started today. Now, here is why I love this quote. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you've already accomplished because every single one of us has got some next goal or some next creative dream that we want to bring to life, right? I mean, everyone has something that they want to make happen. And here's the deal. The next 365 days, those days are going to come and go no matter what. I mean, one year from now, you're either going to be living that dream that's in your heart right now and you're going to be bringing that thing to life or you're going to be sitting on the sidelines like a sad sack. And I got to tell you, I do not want that for you. You're either going to have made one whole year of amazing progress or no progress whatsoever. In fact, if we're honest, right? We might even backslide a bit because if you don't take action, backsliding is what tends to happen to all of us, right? Damn, Marie, your beard game is tight. I don't play, dude. I started this shit like a year ago. Damn, I wish I started then. Sad sack. I'm here to say to you right now, do not shortchange yourself. Because when it comes to the really important things in life, like your business, like your relationships, your health, all of it is about the long game. Those small steps that you take every single day, as long as you take them now and you keep taking them, they're going to pay off a thousandfold down the road. But your life won't change on its own. You have to start taking action today. And that's what this quote is all about. Look, I'm going to be honest. We all ain't getting any younger here. Our time on this planet is so damn precious. You are so damn precious. If there's anything that you want to do in this world, anything that you want to create or experience or achieve, you have got to stop procrastinating. Stop saying tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. Now is the time, my friend. This moment, this instant. Now that said, here is the cue that I want you to A. What's the one thing that you want to do or experience or achieve that a year from now you will be so damn happy and proud of yourself for starting today? And this is the most important step. You know me, right? What's the one action step that you can take right now to start bringing whatever that is to life? I want you to leave a comment below and let me know. Now, as always, the very best conversations happen over at marieforleo.com. So I want you to leave a comment over there right now so myself and my team and our entire community can support you. Now, once you're over there, be sure to subscribe to our email list and become an MF Insider. What you're going to get is instant access to a fantastic audio I created called how to get anything you want. It's actually perfect for today's episode. You'll also get some exclusive content, some special giveaways, and some little personal insights from me that I just don't share anywhere else. Stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world really does need that special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Murray TV.